everybody. Hello. <laughs> uh, Cottage Montessori Spring Zoom class with Monique and Karen. Nice to see you guys. Um, let's do our hello song. And when you hear your name, you can do something silly or say hi or say a silly word like cauliflower, anything you want. And if you're watching this and you're not in our class, you can just pretend that we said your name and you can make a silly sound or a, a motion too. <laughs> That's a great idea. All right, ready? Hello, Isla. Hello, Carla. Hello, Charlotte. We're glad to have you here. Hello, Ella. Hello, Evie. Hello, Jack. We're glad to have you here. Hello, Kaito. Hello, Micah. Hello, Rafi. We're glad to have you here. Hello, Sophie. Hello, other friends. Hello, Karen. We're glad to have you here. When I was um, little, there used to be a show called Romper Room that I liked to watch. And the teacher always said people's names, but they never said Monique because I had such a different name. So I, I, I liked being able to say everyone so that you could put your name in there if you're another friend that isn't in our regular class. That was a great idea, Karen. Thanks, Moni. Um, well, I want to just uh, give everybody a virtual hug. Here you go. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can give yourself a nice big hug too. And good morning. We are um, still in springtime while we're making these videos. And we are uh, just going to talk about uh, kind of general sorts of things because we don't know what date it is when you're watching this. It's a little cloudy here today and we're just having uh, a good time finishing up our school year. We're gonna have about another week of these videos and uh, maybe two weeks. And then we're gonna probably wrap them up and then see if we wanna make any more just, just for fun to have them on YouTube for people to watch exciting. So today, um, I had a project for us that I thought you might be interested in. Um, it's make your own puffy paint. Now this is a paint that we're going to make out of flour and um, other things that I'm going to show you in a minute. And then what's so funny is when you finish making your project, you put it in the microwave. And it so I'm going to show you what you need to do this work. You're going to need a little bit of water, flour, baking powder, salt, and food coloring. Mine got really blue spilled out on my food coloring. Um, and so what you do first, and I did this last night so that um, you wouldn't have to watch me measure everything because that can take a long time, is you mix one cup of flour, three teaspoons of baking powder. Usually we use baking soda for a lot of things when we make things at school, but this one uses baking powder. It's a little bit different and it uses three teaspoons of that and one teaspoon of salt. You mix those all up and then you add enough water to make something that looks kind of like pancake batter. Like not terribly thick, but not gloppy, like not liquidy either, because you're going to want to be able to squeeze it out. So this is what it looks like. Now, the thing that's super fun about this is we're going to put it in a little snack sized Ziploc bag. Move my water out of the way so I don't have a spill. All right, so I'm going to put a few spoonfuls in the Ziploc bag. You don't have to fill it too full, but you want to have enough that you can really do a good amount of painting with. So I can't wait to see what's going to happen. This looks so interesting. 
it's pretty amazing. I was so surprised. Now I'm just going to get some of the, I forgot to bring any paper towels with me, so I'm just going to wipe it right on here. So now you can see I've got some batter, some paint, the base of our paint in here, and then we're going to add a couple of drops of food coloring. I think I'm going to do red. Let's see. You'll see that I did a practice one yesterday so that you could see what it looks like when it comes out of the uh-oh, my red might be dried up. Yep, I'm gonna get a different color. How about green? All right, you're gonna put like three, maybe four drops in. Now this is the tricky part. You absolutely want to squeeze it, the zipper closed tight. You do not want anything to squeeze out. So now it's tight. And now you get to squish it around. Yeah. Looks like fun. This is the fun part. And you can do all sorts of squishy mixing. I'm wondering if the top could be closed too, just in case the squishing got very vigorous so it didn't pop open. Well, uh, I mean, it is zipped closed. You mean... Tape. Oh, I'm just thinking sometimes when I've squeezed something in a Ziploc bag, the Ziploc has popped open. That's true. You, you don't want to squeeze too hard. You just kind of want to roll it around so that the color mixes in. Mm -hmm. You can kind of see that. Now, then, this is where you might need an adult. You want to sort of squish it down to a corner. Now, the other piece that I forgot to mention that you need for this work is a twist tie. Whoa. We're going to twist it like this so it makes kind of a little, a little baggie of color. Now, here's a piece of paper that we're going to use, and you need a scissor. So you're going to cut just the tiniest little bit of the corner of this bag off. Tiny. Did I cut enough? No. Okay, and then, like you're decorating a cake, you're gonna squeeze it out. Oh. That's how you make your drawing. Yeah. That is like frosting. <laughs> it is. Now, because I didn't want you to have to wait while I put it in the microwave, you can see what it looks like now. It's kind of thin and shiny. Then I did one yesterday that I put in the microwave. <gasps> ah, puffs up. And you can see on the side. Oh, it's thick. It thick. And it looks kind of foamy. Yeah, it's kind of like foam. Isn't that neat? Oh, wow. So on the instructions that I saw online, you could do, you could divide your, your mixture, because I still have quite a bit left in here, into different bags with different colors, and you could have all sorts of rainbow colors on your puffy paintwork. Wow, that's so cool. So, this one I'll put in my microwave later, and we'll see what it looks like. But I also made an extra one this morning that looked a little bit like a heart. Wow. Sure, and this was an experiment because I wasn't sure whether if you had uh, flour and baking powder and salt overnight, would it still work? Or did you have to use it all up in one day? And it still works. It's still puffy. Wow. So, uh, how long do you put it in the microwave for? Oh, that's the amazing part. 30 seconds. Wow. Yeah, 30 to 45 seconds. So this one that I did um, this morning was a little more liquidy. I think it had separated a little bit overnight. This is my other bag of, of green from this from yesterday that you can't, once it's separated, you can't really squish it around because you've cut a tip off, the tip off so it would squeeze out if you tried to squish it. So I couldn't really squish it. So a little bit of water came out which is what I think that little blobby part is at the top, was where the water came out at first. So this works best on the day that you mix it, but it still works the next day, which I was very surprised by. So you can save it and, and uh, do more. Oh, I got all my <laughs> colors. So I hope that you have fun with your puffy paint. And um, yeah, maybe take a picture, but show it to us if you make some. It's really fun. Thanks, Monique.
Yeah. Should we have some circle songs? All right. Um, I think I'm going to do a couple of sitting down ones and then we'll do some standing up ones and then we'll have a dance party. So I don't have to go up, down, up, down, move the computer, move the camera, because that can make people feel a little bit, I don't know, kind of seasick. <laughs> So we've been talking a lot about spring, and so a lot of, we're doing a lot of planting. So why don't we do our planting song? Inch by inch, row by row, gonna make this garden grow. All I need is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row, Someone bless these seeds I sow. Someone warm them from below till the rain comes a tumbling down. It might rain today, so I bet all the gardens are really going to like that. Um, oh. Five little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away. Mother duck said, quack, 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 quack. Only four little duckies came back. Four little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away. Mother duck said, quack, 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 quack. Only three little duckies came back. <laughs> three little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away. Mother duck said, quack, quack, quack. But only two little duckies came back. Two little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away. Mother duck said, quack, quack. Only one little ducky came back. Mm. One little duck went out one day over the hills and far away. Mother duck said quack, 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 quack. But none of her five little duckies came back. Sad mother duck went out one day over the hills and far away. Mother duck said quack. All of her five little duckies came back. Phew! I was worried about those little duckies for a second, but they all came back. Oh. How about, since we're talking about uh, animals and springtime animals, why don't we do a little caterpillar song? Let's see if I can remember. Little Arabella Miller had a fuzzy caterpillar. First it climbed upon her mother, then upon her baby brother. They said, Arabella Miller, put away your caterpillar. Woo! <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I'd be a little bit like creepy if I had a caterpillar crawling on me. They're awfully cute. How about if we do some... Uh, some other songs. I'm going to move my computer. And how about, let's see, you're looking at my ceiling a little too much. Okay. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle, here is my spout. When I got all steamed up, hear me shout. Tip me over and pour me out. Woof, yeah, sometimes I get steamed up. I gotta pour it out. Maybe even take some breaths to calm down. We can talk about that later too. How about teddy bear? Teddy bear, teddy bear, turn around. Teddy bear, teddy bear, touch the ground. Teddy bear, teddy bear, jump up high. Teddy bear, teddy bear, touch the sky. Teddy bear, teddy bear, bend down low. Teddy bear, teddy bear, touch your toes. Teddy bear, teddy bear, turn out the light. Teddy bear, teddy bear, say good night. So now I'd like to do a dance party with my favorite of the moment trout fishing in America. So let me share my screen with you and see, oops, hold on. 
I can share my sound and hopefully this is gonna work. This song is called, I Can Dance. Ready? I don't understand what's wrong with my computer. Hmm. Maybe you can do it. Yeah, but you take yours off. Okay. Or stop sharing your screen, I guess, is the... Oh, yeah, that's what I want to do. Best thing to do. And I will go to Spotify, and I will go to um, I Can Dance. And... Hmm. I think I have to go to trout fishing in America because that's not coming up. Show up right on your. What does the what does it look like? The album. Mm, I I can't remember. I think it's called. I'd have to look it up again. All right. Um. Let's see what we can find. It's it's from. I can dance. I found it. Oh great! There it is. We could do that. It's such a iffy song. It just makes me happy. And it's a good reminder. Just, you know, if you're feeling grumpy or tired, sometimes just getting up and dancing can make you feel so much better. I like the way the guy in the song was saying that he didn't feel like he could do it. And then he just got up and did it and it felt great. Yeah. Yeah, I like that too. And if you're just feeling lonely or by yourself, just get up and dance. Yeah. So before we listen to a story, I thought it might be nice to just take a few deep breaths to sort of get ourselves back to right here so that we can listen 
Um, and usually we like to try to take three deep breaths just because that gives your body enough time to sort of notice, oh, I'm slowing down. That's so well, um, what I'd suggest is that we breathe in through our nose. So like that, and then breathe out through our mouth. You can almost make it sound like a little wind blowing. So your mouth, it's not like, it's sort of, should we try? Okay, I'll count them with my fingers so we can keep track. Ready? Sometimes I even feel my eyes wanting to close when I'm doing that, just to I sort of that. make it all feel even more peaceful. It's like you're in, in your own little special place. Yeah, yeah, my quiet place. We read a book called Charlotte and the Quiet Place. It's a little bit like that. You can create a little quiet place in your head. And that also gives makes it easier for me to, um, to get in sort of my imagination mind. If I've been dancing around, my mind is a little wild. And then to quiet down enough to be able to listen to a story and really pay attention. So I thought we would read, make, oops, it's a little shiny, make way for ducklings. I love this one. What's neat about, one of the things that's neat about this story is that it takes place in Boston, which is where we are. We're outside of Boston. Okay, so I'm going to read it and then I'll show you the pictures. Mr. and Mrs. Mallard were looking for a place to live. But every time Mr. Mallard saw what looked like a good place, Mrs. Mallard said it was no good. There were sure to be foxes in the woods or turtles in the water, and she was not going to raise a family where there might be foxes or turtles. So they flew on. When they got to Boston, they felt too tired to fly any further. There was a nice big pond in the public garden with a little island on it. The very place to spend the night, quacked Mr. Mallard. So down they flapped. Some of you might have been to the, guard, the public garden and seen this exact island. The next morning, they fished for their breakfast in the mud at the bottom of the pond. But they didn't find much. Just as they were getting ready to start on their way, a strange, enormous bird came by. It was pushing a boat full of people and there was a man sitting on its back. Good morning, quacked Mr. Mallard, trying to be polite. The big bird was too proud to answer. But the people on the boat threw peanuts into the water, so the mallards followed them all around the pond and got another breakfast, better than the first. I like this place, said Mrs. Mallard, as they climbed out on the bank and waddled along. Why don't we build a nest and raise our ducklings right in this pond? There are no foxes and no turtles, and the people feed us peanuts. What could be better? Good, said Mrs. Mr. Mallard, delighted that at last Mrs. Mallard had found a place that suited her. But, <gasps> look out, squawked Mrs. Mallard all in a dither. You'll get run over. Ooh. And when she got her breath, she added, this is no place for babies. And all those hard things rushing around, we'll have to look for somewhere else. So they flew over Beacon Hill and round the State House, but there was no place there. They looked in Louisburg Square, but there was no water to swim in. Then they flew over the Charles River, 
This is better, quacked Mr. Mallard. That island looks like a nice quiet place and it's only a little way from the public garden. Yes, Mrs. Mallard remembering the, said Mrs. Mallard remembering the peanuts. That place looks just like the right place to hatch ducklings. So they chose a cozy spot among the bushes near the water and settled down to build their nest. The only, and only just in time, for now, they were beginning to molt. All of their old wing feathers started to drop out and they would not be able to fly again until the new ones came in. But of course they could swim and one day they swam over to the park on the riverbank and there they met a policeman called Michael. Michael fed them peanuts and after that the Mallards called on Michael every day. After Mrs. Mallard had laid eight eggs in the nest she couldn't go to visit Michael anymore because she had to sit on the eggs to keep them warm. She moved off the nest only to get a drink of water or to have her lunch or to count the eggs to make sure that they were all there. One day the ducklings hatched out. First came Jack, then Pack, then Lack, then Mac, and Knack, and Whack, and Pack, and Quack. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Mallard were bursting with pride. It was a great responsibility taking care of so many ducklings and it kept them very busy. One day, Mr. Mallard decided he'd like to take a trip to see what the rest of the river was like further on, so off he set. I'll meet you in a week in the public garden, he quacked over his shoulder, take good care of the ducklings. Don't worry, said Mrs. Mallard, I know all about bringing up children, she said. And she did. She taught them how to swim and dive. She taught them how to walk in a line, to come when they were called, and to keep a safe distance from bikes and scooters and other things with wheels. When at last she felt perfectly satisfied with them, she said one morning, come along children, follow me. Before you could wink an eyelash, Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Knack, Whack, Pack, and Quack fell into line just as they had been taught. Mrs. Mallard led them to the water and they swam behind her to the opposite bank. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So many babies. There they waddled as waited ashore and waddled along until they came to the highway. Uh oh. Mrs. Mallard stepped out to cross the road. Honk, honk, went the horns of the speeding cars. Quack, went Mrs. Mallard as she tumbled back again. Quack, 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 said Jack, cack, lack, mac, knack, whack, pack, and quack. Just as loud as their little quackers could quack. The cars kept speeding by and honking and Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings kept right on quack, quacking. Oh dear. He made such a noise that Michael came running, waving his arms and blowing his whistle. Oh, thank goodness. He planted himself in the center of the road, raised one hand to stop the traffic, and then beckoned with the other the way policemen do for Mrs. Mallard to cross over. As soon as Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings were safe on the other side and on their way down Mount Vernon Street, Michael rushed to his police phone booth. He called Clancy at headquarters and said, there's a family of ducks walking down the street. Clancy said, family of what? Ducks, yelled Michael, send a police car, quick. Meanwhile, Mrs. Mallard had reached the corner bookshop and turned onto Charles Street with Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Knack, Whack, Pack, and Quack, all marching in line behind her. Everyone stared. An old lady from Beacon Hill said, isn't it amazing? And the man who swept the street said, well now, ain't that nice? 
And when Mrs. Mallard heard them, she was so proud, she tipped her nose in the air and walked along with an extra swing in her waddle. When they came to the corner of Beacon Street, there was the police car with four policemen that Clancy had sent from headquarters. The policemen held back the traffic so Mrs. Mallard and her ducklings could march across the street. Right into the public garden. Inside the gate, they all turned around to say thank you to the policeman, and the policeman waved and smiled and said goodbye. When they rushed, when they reached the pond and swam across to the little island, there was Mr. Mallard waiting for them just as he had promised. Can you see him on the island? The ducklings liked the new island so much that they decided to live there. And all day long, they follow the swan boats and eat peanuts. And when night falls, they swim to their little island and go to sleep. The end. So, if you get a chance to go to the public garden in Boston, you will see a beautiful set of statues of, I think it's got both parent ducks and the eight little ducklings behind them, which is really neat kind to see. Gold, right? That's yeah, I think they're brass maybe, and they're oh, very, awesome. very beautiful. On them. It's okay. Yeah, and sometimes they even get dressed up for like, football games and things and wear a little hats and stuff. And you can also ride on one of those swan boats in the nice weather. Yes, yes. And Hopefully maybe. we'll be able to do that again. Right now we're we're still in, uh, when you're watching this, we're still in quarantine. Yes, and you know what? I actually saw a picture of um, the ducklings with masks on. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, so. Anyway, we hope you liked that and it was so nice to spend this time with you. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.